What is your service worth? The quick answer is that you can only charge what people will pay. And you can only find out what people will pay if you find out what people are paying. There are performers who say you need to think outside the box. To avoid stagnating at the price level others have set, set your own price, they say, and those who can afford it will rise to that level. If you'll only leave your house for a premium price, you'll get good pay for your premium bookings, but you may not get very many of them. It's the idea you have to balance against my advice not to be the cheapest entertainer in town. If you do that, you'll get plenty of bookings, but you'll run yourself ragged trying to make a buck, and you'll get really awful clients. I come down on the side of positioning yourself within the price range you find current among most of the established entertainers in your area. You'll get a pretty good idea of that if you check out a broad cross-section of the competition. Write down your plan for this research before you start. Pick a fictional name for yourself, a fictional picnic location and date, and an approximate number of attendees, with maybe a third of them children. And settle on one more detail. If it rains on that date, you plan to have the picnic seven days later. Then, go down the listings in the yellow pages. Call all of them. Ask what they can offer for a show with the details you've written down, and see what they have to say for themselves. Keep a general ask just for a clown or a magician, and mention maybe some balloons or face painting, and see what they recommend. See how each competitor you call approaches the task of firming up your needs, how effectively he presents himself and what his prices are. What are the hot buttons and wows in his sales presentation, the really attractive features he offers if he does? Write down your findings. When they ask if you want to book the show, tell them you have to ask your boss and you'll call back. If they ask for your phone number, tell them you're still looking around and you will call them if you're interested. You will, I guarantee, be very surprised by what's out there in terms of prices, professionalism, and attitude. Now you have the range of prices that people in your area will pay. You'll also find other performers presenting themselves less well than they might, telling the story halfway or fumfering around and making it up as they go along. Don't you be one of them. With a little thought, you won't have any trouble beating most of your competitors in presentation, personality, and clarity when someone calls you. Setting your own price within the range you've researched should be fairly easy. Let's look at your goal. Maybe you don't work a lot and you need every job you can get. With that goal, you have a lot of price flexibility. It may be a good strategy sometimes to let a prospective client think he's getting a special deal. You may want to have a little headroom built into your price, just so you'll be able to offer a little discount to make a wavering caller get off center. But I want to take special care to warn you away from lowering your price too much just to get a booking. Don't be tempted to compete on low price, or you'll get the worst customers in the world. Zoo animals get peanuts. If you get paid peanuts, you're going to get clients who treat you like a zoo animal. Every price, even the lowest, will drive somebody away. If you have a very low price, you'll drive away clients who want to be sure they've hired a performer they can have confidence in. But if you've done your homework, 
finding out what the professionals in your area charge high and low and a particular caller needs more than a little give on your part you can be fairly assured that they'll either be hiring the cheapest entertainer they find or that they're finding the whole field too high and they won't be hiring anybody after looking at the range of prices in my area as an experienced performer I feel confident charging the top amount that the bulk of the entertainers in my area charge a beginner may want to charge less and work the lower end of the spectrum for a while. You'll have some dues to pay while you polish your act, but undercutting everybody to get work usually gives you bottom-of-the-barrel clients. You want to work for people who know how to respect a professional, not people who will treat you like a minimum wage hourly worker. One cross-check to make about your picnic price, there are only so many slots available on your calendar. Some picnic jobs fill dates I never would have sold, but others fill dates that would have been sold anyway, but the picnic got them first. I'll have to let the birthday party mom who wants that date know that I can't accept the booking since the date and time are already taken for a picnic. So I want to be sure that I'm charging enough to make at least as much for working a picnic as I would make if I were doing birthday parties. At this time, here's an example. I charge $160 for a one-hour birthday performance, and I allow one-hour travel time between parties. To make roughly the same, I start computing the price to quote by adding $160 for the first hour of the picnic and $100 for each additional hour. Of course, clients expect, and rightly so, a price break for a larger purchase. And since the usual picnic books me for two to three hours, there won't be unpaid travel time between several short shows. And I'm also saving on mileage. That price works out pretty well. You can easily do the math if you want to figure your price by the same method. There is one more factor to consider before you finalize the final booking. The weather. Cancellations due to bad weather are the biggest problem you'll face in playing the outdoor show and even the indoor shows that take places in months when it might snow. There is no single solution. You need to find out. Ask at the very beginning of the negotiation what the plans are in case of bad weather. Many clients have reserved picnic sites with shelters and they plan to have their event rain or shine. Others assume that you'll be glad to reschedule your engagement free for the following weekend if the weather turns unfriendly. All you really have to sell is spots on your calendar. And if you promise a client that you'll block off both dates, you'll be turning down other work for whichever spot goes unused. I can't afford to do that for free. But if that's what the job demands, I will tell the client I can share the risk of bad weather with you to this extent. I will hold the alternate date available, but if the event is postponed, the deposit is not refunded, and any appearance on an alternate date would be at the full fee. Such a fee is best arranged as a deposit to be paid in advance. You want to have at least that part of the money in hand, or you're likely not to get it if you wait until a cancellation occurs. Certainly when we're working out the job requirements and working out a price, those hundreds add up, and I sometimes hear a flinch when I tell them it'll be $360 for a three-hour visit. But they may be able to afford a single full-featured entertainer at a professional price when it would be way out of their budget to hire separate people for each of these services. I remind the caller I'll be providing multiple services, including some popular features they'll be getting without extra charge. Remember, I'll also be providing free tattoos, for which are worth at least a dollar a piece as I paint faces. I'll be organizing games and providing a generous selection of prizes. That's all included. In fact, everybody will win a little prize, and some people will win really special prizes. We'll cover how you can do that later. If there will be relatively few children, mention that many of the adults like balloons, things like funny balloon hats and heart-shaped balloons for the ladies. And you can arrange more elaborate games, even grown-up games, or games for the whole family. And if they're still flinching, that's when you give just a little. Remember, I suggested that you build in a little headroom in your price 
or have something extra you can throw in to sweeten the deal. Here's a magic word that works on the customer and at the same time it works on you. Try saying out loud, I can take care of all of your entertainment needs for the picnic for only $350. Or, this will only cost you $350. Or some number that seems high to you. How did you feel when you said that? Did you experience a sudden lack of confidence? Did you flinch when you said it? Just for exercise, say it again, and then lower the amount until your voice is full of confidence. When you've reached that number, your show is probably worth more than that. If you're tempted to reduce your rate below the usual and customary fee you've researched in your area, remember that these people are almost certainly spending more for the moon bounce and the pony ride and I don't know about you, but I refuse to be paid less than a horse.